interact with us so that you can be assessed by this committee of National Assembly on your suitability to hold the office to which you have been nominated by His Excellency the President. We will start by administering an oath. Uh, you may choose to use the Bible, the Quran. I think there's also an Indian holy book. The Quran. The, eh? the Gita. Yes, uh, the Quran, so you may be upstanding. Take the Quran in your right hand and recite the oath that the sergeant will show you. I, Salim Vuria Mgala Mvuria, do swear that the evidence I shall give before this committee on this on the matter under this consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, Allah. The next uh, is if you have your documents, pass them on to the clerk to cross-check with what we have on you. We'll start by introducing ourselves. I'm the chairman of this committee, Speaker of the National Assembly. On my right is the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Gladys Boss. On my left is the Clerk of the National Assembly, Samuel Njoroge. I'll invite the Honorable members of the committee to introduce themselves. Naisula. Naisula Lesuda, MP Samburu West. Nelson Koech, MP Belgut. David Kosing MP, Pokot South. Gekare David, Nakoro Town East. Masse Mary, Teso South. Abdul Rahim Daoud, MP North Menti. George Gitonga Murugara, Tharaka. Owen Bayer, Gilifi North. Robert Mbui, Kadiani. Uh, Stephen Mule, Matungulu. Dido Raso, Saku. Abdishurie, Balabala. Nishimboko Likoni. Rehab Mukami. I'm Caleb Sabot. For the record. Kimani Shoma. For purpose of this proceedings, you'll be referred by to by everybody as nominee. So nominee. Uh, introduce yourselves by name, educational background, work experience, and your key competences that make you believe you are suitable for the appointment to which you have been proposed in under five minutes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker and honorable members of this committee. My name is Salim Mvuria Mgala. I have a master's uh, degree. I also have a bachelor's degree from Egerton University. I also uh, did my KCSE at Mpeketoni Secondary School and Primary School at uh, Maverivrini Primary School. Mpeketoni in Lamu. 
Yes, Mpeke Tony in Lamu. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I come to this vetting session also having served as the first governor of Kuala County uh, and I also worked uh, different positions uh, in uh, international non-government organizations. I also come to this uh, vetting committee uh, as the immediate former cabinet secretary uh, mining, Blue Economy and Maritime Affairs. Uh, I come to this committee, Mr. Speaker, uh, having served the public uh, for over uh, 10 years. Uh, Mr. Speaker and members of this committee, I also have a leadership, a management and administrative skills uh, that are part of my competencies uh, for this uh, process. I come to this vetting committee also with uh, a formidable track record uh, of performance in, in different spe spheres of the public, uh, having transformed the county of Kuala socially, politically and economically, and also having provided leadership in key reforms uh, in the Ministry of Mining, Blue Economy and Maritime Affairs. Uh, there are quite a number of details, but uh, uh, because of time, I want to present myself before this committee and before Kenyans as a candidate, as a nominee who has the formidable uh, requisite experience to manage the affairs of the Ministry of Investment trade and industry. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'll invite the debit speaker to ask the first question. Uh, Honorable Mvuria, I will ask you questions, uh, one relating to where you're coming from, so we know how well you performed from your previous Ministry of Mining and Blue Economy and then to the ministry that you're going to. Uh, first, I'll start. I would like you to tell us about uh, the key deliverables that can be attributed to your tenure when you are the CS for Blue Economy Maritime and so on. Uh, you know, taking into account some of the issues that are raised, in 2023, there was unexplained deaths of uh, cage farmers in Lake Victoria. You know, what did you do about that? There was also, when you came into office, there had been a report in 2019, uh, the performance audit report on monitoring of mining operations uh, by the State Department of Mining. Uh, and an act of parliament, the Mining Act had been passed when you came into office. So Kenya said that, uh, the report said that currently only 1% uh, of, our, of our GDP is attributable to mining, yet it should be as high as 10%. And another thing that was raised in that report is that the, we've had mines that have not been restored, which has become areas of criminal activity. There's also been deaths around unlicensed and uh, properly regulated mines. So how did you work when you joined office uh, to enhance the sector's oversight, improve licensing conditions, and to ensure that we have responsible miner, mining practices? Um, on where you're going, I'm reliably informed that uh, the Ministry of Trade, where you're going, also is, is, uh, has a Kenya Bureau of Standards under it. Tell us what you will do to ensure that you curb the issue of counterfeit products and substandard products and contraband products coming into our country, uh, particularly ethanol, which has caused the big challenge of illicit brew because people are smuggling the ethanol through Uganda and Tanzania because the, the, I think the duty in Kenya is much higher. And, uh, and, also, and lastly, also the banned pesticides, pesticides that are banned and have been confirmed to cause cancer that are coming through uh, our borders and uh, are being cleared by KEBS. Thank you. Nominee, you can answer those. 
Uh, thank, thank you very much, Honorable Chair uh, and uh, Honorable Gladys, uh, for the questions that uh, you put before me. Uh, first of all, when I reported and assumed office at the Ministry of Mining, Blue Economy and Maritime Affairs, uh, this was a very new ministry. The three topics have been there before, mining, fisheries, blue economy, but in terms of having it as a ministry, that was the first time. So I did provide leadership in carrying out key reforms to ensure that that ministry can achieve the mandate and also can make a contribution in the economy of our country. And the first uh, reform that uh, uh, we carried out was the reform around licensing. Uh, before the reforms, licensing was very haphazard. And therefore, what has happened now is that uh, we have now an organized licensing system uh, where investors apply through the online cadaster and then we have structures that review and recommend licensing. And even as I uh, left office, uh, the process of licensing is up to date and it is now working according to procedure. As a result of that, the moratorium was lifted in October last year uh, and licenses over 1,200 uh, are now uh, getting processed without any challenges. Uh, the second thing that uh, is key for reforms is the testing and sampling. Uh, investors had a lot of challenges, you know, on testing their uh, products. And therefore, I led reforms that have now devolved eight uh, lab across the country. So now we have uh, decentralization and investors can easily now uh, do their testing across the country. Uh, there's one more that is still under reform, the Madini House, which I also had committed to the committee at that time, uh, and it is also uh, in good progress. I also provide a leadership in instituting reforms on value addition. Uh, and as we speak, we have quite a number of investors across the country uh, that are doing a value addition. Because uh, exporting of raw minerals denies the country uh, a lot of revenue and jobs. If you go to the western region, for example, we have an investor in a gold refinery, uh, 5.8 billion. Uh, in uh, El Geo Maracuet, you have Flospa. We have an investor, 4.8 billion. In Vihiga, we have an investor, 2.5 billion. Uh, and we had also mapped other areas of the country. Uh, right now, there's an investor who is ready to do 11 billion of iron ore in uh, Taita Taveta. Uh, that will also benefit uh, Taraka in an area called Kidiori and part of Kitui. You know, so that bringing on board of investors is part of my achievement in the ministry. Uh, and we also organize the artisanal mining uh, individuals into cooperative societies. Now we have about 300 uh, cooperative societies that are ready for licensing across the country. I provided leadership in gazetting 29 artisanal mining committees that will be giving permits on the ground so that people do not have to travel uh, away from where they are. We took the issue of illegal mining very seriously and safety and proposed measures to have a mining police unit uh, that is responsible for some of the issues. So I, I take note of the issues you have raised about uh, uh, the in insecurity in some of the mines. So the mining police unit has been very critical in making sure that uh, they work with the county security teams uh, to ensure that some of these issues 
uh, are, are being addressed on the ground. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, mine restoration, each of the applicant for a mining license, they have to attach an environmental restoration plan, uh, which they do as they report and they also do as they exit. And we have uh, a compliance teams uh, to ensure that this can be observed. Uh, the other thing is that uh, mining was uh, understaffed and we have quite a number of staff now who, has, who have come on the ground uh, and things are moving on. On blue economy, uh, many people, many Kenyans uh, had not understood uh, the blue economy and fishery sector and we instituted reforms also to ensure that we can inspire the economy of the, the country through blue economy. As a result, we provided a mapping in the Indian Ocean and Lake Victoria so that we can allow for a lower level value addition units and infrastructure that are going to help fishermen and other stakeholders in the sector. So as a result, we did mapping from all the way Lamu to Kuale uh, and also from Busia to Migori and identified areas for basic value addition. Uh, as I speak, these uh, value addition points have now been contracted and they will be helping uh, fishermen to delay sales so that they can fetch good price. Uh, on that note, we also provided leadership in ensuring that we reform the beach management units uh, into cooperative societies. Right now we have around 240 uh, cooperative societies in the fishery sector that are going to be very useful, you know, to engage with the economy in terms of uh, capacity building, but also in terms of engaging and being linked to financial institutions. So right now the government is now ready to invest 1.4 billion in the coast region for the landing sites. And the government is also ready to invest another 1.5 billion in the lake region, all the way from Mulukoba to uh, Got Kochola in Migori, uh, where those uh, structures have been identified. Uh, since independence, this country has not had an industrial vessel. We licensed the first one, which is going to be uh, providing, you know, avenue for industrial fishing. Uh, and provide four billion every year uh, in terms of income uh, in the Indian Ocean. Our target was to do three before the end of the year, uh, but last uh, two weeks we gave license to uh, one vessel and more are coming to ensure that uh, uh, we are able to inspire the potential in the blue economy sector. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, this topic is very lucrative but I also want to add that Kenya is now a highly respected maritime country because when we went to London last year and the campaign, Kenya was elected category C uh, as a maritime country. And as a result of that profile, uh, I continue to provide leadership to ensure that we are able to upgrade our institutions to fit the new profile. As a result of that, we have a, a pending draft bill for Bandari Maritime Academy to be a full institution. Uh, and part of the upgrade is to construct a survival and training center, which will cost the government of Kenya 2.4 billion, uh, basically to ensure that we enhance uh, our capacity building on maritime affairs. Okay, I think, uh, Honorable Mburi, I think I'm satisfied now, but I think it confirms what the President said, that you had very poor communication, because you've done great things, but no Kenya knows about it. I am from the Flospa area, I didn't even know that you have an investor for it, so maybe you can use an opportunity to tell my people in El Geo Marakwet what exactly you're doing with the Flospa before you go to your next answer. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable uh, uh, Gladys. Uh, and I think uh, maybe we missed out, but the members of parliament from that region and the leadership we were together when we were introducing the investor. 
but because of this session, uh, I'm sure now we have created uh, awareness across the board to uh, tell everybody that now we have an investor in uh, uh, El Geo. Before we go to the next, uh, Salim, the licensed industrial vessel in our uh, ocean waters, is it Kenyans or foreigners? It is a, it is a foreign owned, but also we will have Kenyans uh, who also partner in that uh, vessel. What percent local content? Uh, the local content, okay, we haven't uh, signed the agreement yet. I think that was part of the negotiation, but we are looking at between 15 to 30 percent Kenyan. The law provides 40. Uh, that was the initial negotiation, and the negotiations have not been closed, so I'm sure anyway, now my colleagues will there. take over and move. We uh, ask whoever will yeah. be taking over. Exactly. Majority leader? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker. Remember, strictly one question each. Honorable Speaker, CS nominee, um, EAC, the East African trade uh, community, trade negotiations. Kenya is viewed as a very weak negotiator, especially for her local protection of her local industries and local farmers. And uh, I would want to hear what you intend to do, should you be confirmed in this ministry, to be a good negotiator for Kenyan industries and more so farmers. Yesterday, the Honorable Muller here, or the day before, was speaking about tomato farmers, onion farmers, potato, um, potato farmers, egg farmers, pottery uh, keepers in the country not being able to sell their produce locally because of the proliferation of cheaper products coming from the East African community countries. And largely because of the East African Treaty, we cannot use tariff barriers, but the non-tariff barriers, which are supposed to be negotiated by the ministry, um, I'm told we've been very weak on that. What would you do to do that? And also on uh, the policy of uh, import substitution. We had very many good proposals, and I agree with the Deputy Speaker that uh, you clearly failed in communication. Because all the good things you've spoken about in your ministry, of uh, former Ministry of Mining, as you say, you engage with the Elgeo Marakwet uh, leadership. The Deputy Speaker uh, was born there, but she represents the people of Asingishu. Next door, she didn't know, because you engage with the local leadership. Uh, but that is a, an investment for Kenya, not for Elgeo Marakwet County. Uh, and therefore, I, I want to put it to you, and uh, you will tell us whether you actually did fail in communication. And if you failed in your previous ministry in communication, what would you say to convince Kenyans and us that you will not fail in communicating what you are doing for our country in uh, the new ministry should, be, should you be approved. And I'm saying that, uh, uh, moving on to what I was speaking about, import substitution, our local manufacturing sector, because of a failure of communication in government, our local manufacturers had very good propositions or provisions in the finance bill that was lost, as we have been told, out of poor communication by government. We have now exposed our local manufacturers, whether they are manufacturers of diapers, sanitary towels, or those in the steel industry, to unfair competition from very cheap imports whose uh, standards we can't even ascertain since they come to the country, uh, done on standards from other countries, especially those from the far Asian countries. What will you do as a new minister to ensure that we at least save the good provisions that were there in the finance bill touching on local manufacturing industry to protect our manufacturing industry now as since the trade uh, the industry state department for industry will be under you and uh, some of those provisions sought to protect that state department uh, work in the manufacturing sector 
Nominee. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and I want uh, to address the matters that have been raised by the Honorable Majority Leader. And thank you very much, Majority Leader. Uh, I think I will, uh, first of all, I want to begin uh, on where you stopped, on the issue of communication. Uh, I, I must say that we, we did all the best to communicate this through the media uh, and through any other forms. Uh, however, uh, going forward, it is a matter that we will be able to strengthen uh, to ensure that there is communication. Yeah, and communication speaker, here... The, you know there is the mainstream media, yes. which we used to call mainstream media, which is the TV stations and the newspapers. But today, the alternative media, which is social media, is now the mainstream media. Yes, exactly. So you've got to change your thinking, who's alternative and who's the <laughs> mainstream. Yeah, that, that is, that is uh, uh, one of the areas that we will, uh, going forward, uh, I think as government, uh, we will we'll be able to use those uh, uh, channels of communication uh, to ensure that we get everybody on board. Uh, on the matter of uh, uh, local manufacturing and the industry in general, uh, that Honorable Member uh, alluded to the fact that there are good things in the finance bill. Uh, which were meant to revamp, you know, some of the local manufacturers. Uh, w w one of the key areas that we will uh, strengthen, or I will provide leadership in strengthening, uh, is to make sure that we bring as many stakeholders as possible. Uh, for example, the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, uh, KEPSA, uh, the, Kenya, uh, the K Kenya National Chamber, uh, of commerce and industry uh, and many other stakeholders to make sure that as much as possible uh, they participate and also using some of the uh, corporations and sagas uh, in the ministry Chair, on a point of order maybe the nominee did not get my question right uh, because those are the processes you are describing yeah i was asking should you get nominated yes and you find, for instance, the provision to levy excise duty on sanitary pads that are fully finished products from, uh, for instance, China, was in an endeavor to, to actualize the import substitution policy yeah. to support local manufacturers. That particular provision was lost in the finance bill. Should you be approved, will you pursue and maybe the nominee who was there before you uh, actually did put it very well that it is possible to break down the finance bill into various other um, uh, laws. Should you then be approved? Would you pursue actualizing the good provisions that sought to protect local industry? Because as I said, they were lost because of, of the poor communication generally in government. Uh, so my direct question is, are you going to pursue the import substitution policy and protection of local industry should you be approved and bring uh, legislative proposals to parliament to actualize that which was lost oh yes uh, uh, nominee. yes mr speaker i think the, the answer is yes uh, because you see if we had uh, very good proposals that inspire the economy and they were lost what i'm committing to this uh, committee is that we will and I will provide leadership in the ministry to pursue them. Uh, because if we are to inspire the local manufacturing, then as government, we need to have a deliberate policy uh, to ensure that uh, either we impose levies or we reduce levies to ensure that these uh, manufacturing industries can survive. So the answer is yes. Uh, I will be providing leadership in pursuing these good things. But as we pursue these good things that were lost in the finance bill, Mr. Chairman, I also want to insist that we'll have a robust engagement uh, with stakeholders who may, not have, who may not have seen this before, so that the decision that is finally made is made with all stakeholders uh, in mind. So, so, uh, so that is uh, 
uh, commitment and a yes, and we will use all manner of communication uh, to ensure that we, we, we are able to paint, you know, the positive uh, b uh, gains uh, of these particular good things in the finance bill. So this is something we will pursue, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the second point about a weak negotiation uh, for Kenya. Uh, I also want to commit that we will change the tables. Uh, it has come out not just uh, in negotiating for farmers, but even in other forums, you know, where we have uh, a subcommittee of the East Africa community uh, Kenya has been making a huge contribution in terms of budgets, but in terms of benefits, you find that other countries are the ones benefiting. So this is an area I also want to commit uh, that I will move in to ensure that we protect the national interest. And, in, in, and in, on this one, we make sure that we have parameters before negotiation and we evaluate our negotiation so that uh, we are able to benefit uh, our people. Thank you, Chairman, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have one question for the nominee, and it's in relation to the docket that is going now. Even though I come from an area where his previous docket was important to them, but now that we have been told to ask only one question, let me go to the future. The past, the one who is coming is what I will ask, whom I will ask. So, Mr. Nomini, let's go to manufacturing. And you know very well that manufacturing industry employs many people, contributes a lot to the economy of this country, and that's where economies that have developed emphasize their efforts on a long time ago. So the manufacturing sector in Kenya now is facing significant challenges, Mr. Nomini with many industries shutting down, actually, production plants or downsizing operation. This is because the key issues they are raising is high taxation, increased cost of power, ease and cost of doing business, unhealthy competition from imported finished goods. And then neighboring countries are seemingly looking more attractive to them because of those issues. Some of those who have relocated business to these restrictions, if approved as a minister for trade and industry, what are you going to do to reverse this sorry state of affairs, Mr. 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 Nomini? An additional question to that. Uh, yeah. It's almost a similar one. Um, as a cabinet uh, secretary nominee for the Ministry of Trade uh, and Investment, how do you plan to protect local industries and provide adequate financing? for micro, small, and medium enterprise in the manufacturing sector, especially considering the significant decline of foreign direct investment as a share of GDP from 3.1% in 2011 to 0.3% in 2022. Salim, let's take the next person. If you have no question, we pass. I may not have a question, but I have something to say. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, uh, Honorable Mburia, uh, many Kenyans uh, think or say you are a desk minister. You only sit on your desk and run your ministry from your desk. Why am I, uh, and one of the evidence they are giving is that where you are as minister for mining, uh, many counties are, are mineral counties or mining counties. And for example, West Pokot County is seriously a mineral county. If you have somebody in West Pokot who is Mburia, who is one of Mburia, they will be thinking you are actually a governor of Kuali. Nobody will remember these two years that you have been a minister, Honorable uh, Mburia, in all honesty and truth, nobody. So now you are going to a ministry which is also very important, which is industries. And all counties are going, the bottom up, they are going to be maybe industrial centers. Are you going to run your ministry from the desk where you are in minerals? Thank you, Speaker. A short, short questions. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Quickly. Uh, I want to confirm that I'm not a desk minister. I am I'm not a desk minister. I was in uh, uh, West Pokot uh, because of the clinkerization program.
the 45 billion. Uh, I was in Kidiori with uh, Mishimiwa here, confirmed, uh, and many other places uh, across the country, including uh, Kadunzweni in Makweni, uh, Mulukoba in Busia, and many others. So maybe uh, I may not have come to your constituency. I was also in Kamket uh, and uh, Katikit. In Kambia, Samaki, and I can give examples, you know, many of them, but uh, I think we need to also uh, acknowledge that our country is very big uh, and you cannot be there at the right time. Uh, remember also, Mushimiwa, this ministry was fairly new and we had also to put structures in place uh, before we go out there. But I have a lot of uh, field information which I can give you here. Uh, to confirm that I was not desk, uh, including visiting Ndarawe, the, the first minister of the Republic of Kenya to visit Ndarawe looking for Colton in that area, and I was with the member of parliament. So I think we have quite a number uh, of visits that we have done. Uh, but again, I want to say that we will visit Kenya. I will visit Kenya as much as possible. Uh, on the matter of uh, protecting the local uh, small and micro enterprises against the foreign uh, investors who might have big capital, uh, one of the things that I want to bring to Parliament, and I, we will work together, is that currently there's a lacuna in legislation uh, to protect the local uh, investors. And one of the critical things I want to commit we bring in this house is the trade development bill and the trade development policy that is going now to provide a, a clear dichotomy about the foreign uh, and the local investors. We put it in law. Uh, I know even uh, previously there was, there was a case of China Square uh, which was handled but I want to bring it to this house that we have a lacuna in law. And the first thing we will do together is to ensure that we review the trade development bill, we review the policy uh, to ensure that we have inclusion uh, of the, this kind of protection. So that we don't just pro do protection as a matter of impasse, but as a matter of policy and law. Uh, the, other, the other law that we will need to revise to ensure that we anchor our actions in law is also the Investment Act 2004 uh, to ensure that it also recognizes uh, that kind of arrangement where we protect uh, our local manufacturing. Uh, the, the other question by Mweshimiwa Junet, uh, it is true that we have a big challenge with manufacturing now. Uh, you know, we have a target to move it to 15% uh, to in 2027 uh, and 20% in 2030. But if you look at the trends, there are quite a number of challenges uh, that also uh, challenge the manufacturing sector. And one of it is the cost of power, uh, which Mushimiwa has mentioned. And the cost of power is something that we can also do negotiation uh, with our uh, colleagues in the Ministry of Energy uh, so that we see the kind of tariffs that will be encouraging manufacturing and the kind of tariffs that do not encourage, we review them so that we provide an enabling environment uh, for manufacturing. That also goes with also the taxation. But more importantly on manufacturing, uh, manufacturing also required an enabling environment. And currently what is happening is that manufacturers would want a plug and play arrangement. They come to the country, uh, there's a shorter process for licensing, you show them where to work and they can work. Currently we have a, a, a big challenge with the issues of land you find that many manufacturers would want, you know, big pieces of land. It is not there. However, because of the special economic zones 
and also the export processing zone, there is an opportunity there to ensure that uh, we create an enabling environment for manufacturing in our country. And maybe these are some of the things we will discuss as we go along. Speaker, maybe you could add one from uh, Kenyan who is asking on about those special economic zones, CS that uh, nominee that you have mentioned. Uh, a number of these special economic zones now are being seen as um, havens for tax evasion. And uh, a number of people who are in those uh, special economic zones are importing products apparently for use in the SEZs, but they uh, dump them in the domestic economies. What are you going to do to stem, uh, the Kenyan is asking, what will you do to stem the abuse of the SEZs as uh, tax evasion havens? The action that uh, I will take as the Minister for Trade is to ensure that all the manufacturers pay tax. So we'll use the institutions in the ministry uh, to make sure that we enforce compliance. Uh, because if they evade to pay tax, then it b defeats the entire purpose of having them as a priority in the special economic zone. So we'll ensure that we use all the institutions available uh, to make sure that they comply uh, in paying tax in our country. Because we cannot give all the advantages and then they don't pay tax. That one is not going to be accepted. Yes, Gikari. Thank you, Chairman. Maybe just to reiterate what the majority leader was talking about, about communication. I think it is important for the nominee to understand the importance of uh, communication or passing the government uh, uh, information to the public. You know, I have been in a committee where uh, I, we were oversighting the nominee, and it has always been an issue. But all that, not uh, with, without uh, uh, the question that I want to ask the nominee, is on matters to do with substandard counterfeit contraband products that find their way in the market. And what happens, which is the worst part, is that hustlers at a local Monainchi who hustles goes to the bank, gets a loan of around 100,000 to buy goods that he doesn't know whether they are counterfeit or contraband. And that is where the police land all the time. Yet these things are supposed to be stopped at the point of entry. In your tenure in this ministry, what are you going to do to try and save these Kenyans the agony of losing all their businesses uh, to the police? Just, w w uh, in fact, that would have been stopped at the point of entry. So what policy measures are you going to put in place to protect these Kenyans by stopping these counterfeits at that entry point? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Very quickly, I think it would be important if this committee finds you suitable to hold that position and you're passed or uh, uh, approved by the National Assembly to have a candid conversation and a sit down with the manufacturers, not just the normal conference, but have a conversation with them on what the issues are. Because we've left it to ourselves to decide it is the taxes, uh, others think it is electricity, other things. Let us hear from them what their real issues are as you come up with the policies. Uh, because if it's about taxes, others think that some manufacturers are favored. When we see exempts, we can almost tell which manufacturer is being favored. And so we want all manufacturers to feel that the country and, the, and you and the nation is actually serving them. But quickly to my question, direct question, what measures will you take to harness the entrepreneurial skills of our young people who have a strong focus on digital technology? We keep telling our graduates they are no longer, we don't have enough formal jobs, they should get into entrepreneurship businesses, but what are we doing or what will you do to see to it that we harness it and not just telling them there are no white collar jobs? Go to Mary. Thank you. Uh, the nominee, I have just one short one. 
Short, uh, short question. Uh, yes, yes, short question. One. To appease the previous uh, one. <laughs> yes. Uh, I want to confirm that uh, even Tesos South Alupe area was visited, if not by you, by your counterpart in migration, uh, migration department, migration. Uh, there, was some, there was some mining activity. This relates to your former ministry. There was some mining activity right at the border, at Alupe area, at the neighboring countryside. Even the soil from the mining site has actually blocked the stream that is separating us and the neighboring country. The concerns of the community there uh, are safety of the people. The houses are cracking, a lot of health issues, too much dust. And also fears that, uh, fears regarding to the extent of the mining activity uh, towards the Kenyan side. So my question is if you could give a comment uh, to allay the fears of the community as to what has happened, whether they are safe, whether our minerals underground are safe. Uh, I, I think I leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the nominee, Honorable Mvuria. Um, how are you going to, everybody is talking about industries and the big people. How are you going to talk about assisting the small person who is on the street uh, in terms of uh, regulations, in term of, terms of uh, markets for them, small, small um, places where they can do business, and uh, regulations and licenses? Because you see, the, the licensing, I know it is in the county governments, but how are you going to look for them for the markets, export of uh, produce, and uh, the MTF, I think, uh, third term, medium term, was done in up to 2022. Are you going to looking at doing the uh, medium term four uh, while you are in, if you are chosen for this ministry? Nominee, you can answer those. From Mokikaria, Naisola, Mary, and Daoud. A short, short questions. Yeah, th thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Honorable Rahim. Uh, first of all, most of the uh, trade issues uh, around uh, small and medium enterprises are devolved. Uh, and therefore, the action that I will do in the ministry is first of all to ensure that we develop a cordial relations with the county government. Uh, right now, there are 37 uh, county aggregation and industrial parks, and these are meant to provide an avenue uh, for small level traders to have a place where they can aggregate, to have a place where they can have the first line of value addition. Uh, so this particular model that we are working with the county government uh, is meant to inspire the local economy. So we will be able to work together uh, to ensure that these types then become uh, practical, formidable places for value addition, for businesses, and to, to inspire uh, private investment. Uh, and not just the, the types, we also have a cluster, you know, of aggregation centers, uh, that will also be very useful uh, to aggregate their products uh, and they can prepare for the market. What we'll also do at the national level is to support the county governments with the quality checks. So we'll be utilizing our institutions of quality checks uh, that will work with the county governments to make sure that if it is tomatoes that are being aggregated, then we look at the issue of uh, quality. Uh, the other issue that uh, uh, Honorable Mary has raised about mining in Alupe, uh, I want to uh, confirm that we have mining activities in our neighboring countries in Uganda, mining of uh, gold uh, in that region. Uh, and the investor from across the border has been mining underground, entering into Kenya. And these are issues that we took up with our colleagues in uh, Interior. Uh, and the interior and together with the Minister of Mining closed uh, the mine and it is monitoring those activities. 
We also scaled up this as a border issue uh, that is also going to attract discussions between Kenya uh, and Uganda to ensure that we don't infringe uh, each other's uh, space. Uh, the other issue that Mushimua Naisula has raised about uh, harnessing digital technology, especially for young people, uh, the plan is basically to do incubation and mentorship of ideas. So I, I intend to provide leadership for Kirdi uh, to mentor and to do uh, business incubation for young people. Uh, in addition to that, we'll be able to develop an industrialization fund, which is going to help young entrepreneurs uh, to be able now to advance their business ideas. On the matter of counterfeit, uh, first of all, I want to say that the area of counterfeit is an area that we will need to work together with Parliament to make sure that the, the counterfeit authority you know, has enough regulations, has enough legislation uh, to deal with the counterfeit in our country. In addition to that, we, are going, we will introduce a counterfeit integrated management system that is going to be uh, introducing efficiency uh, in identifying counterfeit and counterband goods. We'll also work with CAPS to ensure that uh, they also participate in checking the quality of goods. Uh, however, most of these counterfeit goods uh, come across the borders, so we'll work with our colleagues in security to ensure that uh, we also create awareness uh, and enforce compliance uh, so that the borders are not used to bring counterfeit goods to our country. Thank you. Yes, uh, George, yes. Honorable <coughs> George Morgan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, nominee, I think you had started well in the Ministry of Mining. And I confirm because we went with you to Tharaka, Tharakanifi, and while there you mentioned Kitui and West Pokot and other counties. And you mentioned that investors are actually coming to invest in the mining sector in the country. I hope you've not lost the address book because now it does appear that they may have to pass through you as they come to invest. And that makes you to EPZ. The EPZs are created purely to ensure that we exploit our local raw materials for purposes of export. <laughs> But we are aware that the raw materials that are used in most of these EPZ industries are actually imported. They are brought into the country, they process them, and they then export. And we are told part of that is simple, the simple genes worn by, worn by our youngsters in the country. Can you kindly confirm how you would work with, especially the Ministry of Agriculture, to ensure that those crops that are supposed to spur investment in the country, like cotton, sunflower, uh, canola, and others, are revived, and we are able to start producing raw materials which would go into EPZ, as a result of which we would be able to export our own produce. Owen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would like to just ask one question. You know, when I, I, I joined university to do masters, there was this professor who must have been doing some work on uh, AGOA, the African Growth and Opportunities Act. And he made me believe, uh, every lecture he would just talk about AGOA, 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 AGOA. And he made me believe that this was a panacea to industrialization, to manufacturing, and to economic growth and the GDP of this country. If you look at the AGOA, the way it is established, it has actually, for a large extent, provided jobs for young people and all that. But this act is actually coming to an end in 2025. 2025, that's when AGOA expires. We, I have fear myself about it because I know the process and what AGOA is and the negotiations. How are you going to ensure that this AGOA treaty, especially for Kenya, is extended 
so that we can continue to, to benefit from it. And the people who have invested heavily in, in, in manufacturing and the industries that are, su are supported by Agoa uh, do not lose their, their investments, and the young people do not lose their jobs, and the country does not lose on the revenue from Agoa. In short, what are your plans about Agoa, its expiration, and going forward? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Nomini uh, Salim Vuria. Historically, Kenya was a preferred destination for foreign direct investments. In fact, ma major multinationals are operating in Kenya and their distribution and manufacturing uh, networks. But however, you have seen that uh, they have left this country in droves as a result of punitive uh, erratic uh, tax regime. Uh, sometimes it's cheaper to produce elsewhere and just send to Kenya and then distribute from here. Corruption by state officers, and this is in immigration, in customs, in standards, in physical planning, in environment. Even sometimes at the county, like a case in point is a Tatu city in Kiambu. And then also the issue of uh, poor infrastructure and energy and in, in transport. What, what do you want to do so that you can return Kenya to its lost glory and in, in, you know, have those multinationals come back? Because then we'll be able to boost the issue of, uh, of employment of our youth. And there's a question that had been uh, sent to the committee though it wasn't um, submitted not in the form of an affidavit as required, but it was a question that I think you need to also answer because I'm an issue of integrity. Uh, these, these people are saying that there have been allegations, accusations, and criticism leveled against you on the matters of corruption with respect to misappropriation of county funds when you served as a governor. There is no details. They are just asking, what is your view on these allegations? And how will you build public trust and demonstrate that you are capable of dealing with stopping graft in that ministry? Thank you, Chairman. Chair, can I give? Yes, yes, Mole. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, the nominee, Honorable Mufuria. Uh, as you are aware that Kenya has invested a lot of funds and resources at Konsa City for the last almost 10 years. And as a nominee for investment, trade, and industry to help the government and the young generation to create jobs, what are your views? What is your vision for Konsa City to be realized as quickly as possible to create the most needed jobs for the young generation in this country? The short one, Salim, we can take Razo. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Uh, because of time, I'll ask two questions. Uh, Honorable Mvuria, you are governor in Kuale, and then you are a cabinet secretary. For those of us in parliament, I think a lot of us, we feel that you governors who came to the central government still believe you are managers in counties as opposed to workers in the executive. Maybe I want you to really comment on that. Uh, my first question is on, because of time, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> we, Okay. Okay. Uh, it is on uh, the blue economy and mining. Uh, it is estimated that this is a billion dollar uh, industry if properly uh, uh, looked at or a lot of effort is put into it in mining, in the blue economy of fishing. Uh, but at the moment, we are only able to raise even less than 1% of the GDP. Is it that we are under-investing 
uh, particularly in that ministry, or we do not have the necessary uh, human resource, uh, or maybe because we don't know that uh, that particular uh, industry or resource exists, particularly in excavation of uh, minerals, uh, in, uh, in the blue economy. Those uh, nominee. Okay, th th thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, there are five questions. Murugara, Owen, Robert, uh, Mole, and Russell. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I want to begin with uh, the two questions that you have been posed by Honorable Raso. Uh, it is true I served as governor for 10 years in uh, Kuala County uh, and transited to BCS. So I want to confirm that I, I don't think I'm in the county. Uh, I hold the national executive in high esteem uh, and I act within the mandate at the national level. So, um, and I want to speak also for some of my colleagues who have served together in cabinet. Speak for yourself. Uh, because, because he said, you governors. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to confirm that uh, that transition has happened and it is now a national responsibility. In any case, it was a comment. It was not a question. Oh, I, I thought it was, a, it was a question. Yes. Uh, the other thing about now the multi-billion sector uh, in mining and blue economy, it is true it is a multi-billion uh, sector. Uh, however, it is not a sector you go in and you get the, the multi-billion. You have to invest. And the first investment, for example, in mining is you have to invest in data. If you expect to reap revenues, then you need, first of all, to invest in data. And that is why it is critical to mention to this House that exploration going forward, a government should invest a lot in exploration. So that when you now have discovered coltan, the government is the one saying we have coltan, it has this economic value. Then now you move to investment. But when you have uh, minerals as part of occurrences, you cannot reap the billions. And I give you an example, Mushimewa. The little actions that we took in the ministry to just reform licensing and the basic data. Right now, the investments in mining this year will be 221 billion. The investments I mentioned earlier, uh, there's one in Kajiado, clinkerization, 60 billion. So if you combine, you get 221. But it is a sector you have to invest fast. Invest in licensing, invest in um, uh, mapping, because you don't expect an investor to come and do prospecting. Then the government is the one ripping the billions. You, you need to put some money for that. On a point of order, speaker. Secondly, yes, a point of order. Uh, on a point of order, Nominee? speaker, just yes. on that point. Yeah. Because, Honorable Speaker, uh, some of us have been here for some time, and uh, and I believe that uh, probably Honorable Borasso is asking that question, because data is available, CS. We spent not less than, if I remember, not less than 9 or 11 billion facilitating the National Intelligence Service to do a geophysical survey of all our mineral deposits. Are you then telling the country that this data is not available to the government or to the ministry? I know that was in the last regime, but government operates in, 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 in perpetuity. And therefore, if that data, and we spend public resources on it, 
And I say that because I was the chairman of the Budget and Appropriations Committee when we allocated the first 5 billion shillings for that geophysical survey. That money was under the Ministry of Mining. It was moved to the National Intelligence Service with the justification or pretext that uh, it was very sensitive data. Are you telling us now that that data that you are told was sensitive is not available at the ministry or with government? It disappeared with the other regime. Okay. And, um, and could that be the reason why there are people who settled uh, on mineral deposits somewhere in, uh, you know where? I, I may not answer. In, in Transmara. I may not answer on yes. the settlements, uh, Mr. Speaker, I may not answer the settlements, but what I want to say is that uh, that geo survey gave us what we call mineral occurrences, and there are 970 across the country. Mineral occurrences are indications. Like now, if you fly the plane in uh, Taraka, for example, they will show you, you know, some basic uh, information on iron ore, on lithium, and something like that. Once you do the occurrences, you need to come back and do a process we call ground truthing. Ground truthing now is the actual drilling of saying that in this area there are some minerals, coltan in Nachola, for example, in Samburu. Uh, then ground truthing, you go back and now reconfirm. And now a certain, is this of economic value or is something that is just for superficial? So that is the process that requires another investment. Uh, the good thing is that uh, before I left, we have done 24 counties, and I think the technical team is reviewing data. So once you have that information, that is specific. You can now tell an investor, in Kenya, we have Coltan, in Darawe, in Alale, in West Pokot, of this value. Now, that is the kind of information, Mushimiwa, that we need to invest in. Uh, the second thing, uh, the, the question also had blue economy. It is the same way with blue economy also. Uh, it is multi-billion, but it is not multi-billion on arrival. It is multi-billion on your initial investment. Uh, for example, if you go to the Indian Ocean, there's a process that has to be done. You know, you need to do stock taking, you know, stock taking of the fish uh, in the Indian Ocean. So that when you are negotiating also with investors, you know, have an idea of what is there. Uh, the Indian Ocean and Lake Victoria are highly occupied also by settlements, especially Indian Ocean, you have beaches and whatever. You need also to do marine spatial plan so that you can identify areas where you can put small pots you can identify areas where where you can put different invest uh, investments that is an investment you need to put initially before you begin now to reap the multi-billion but i want to confirm that as a country uh, we are now on the right trajectory uh, that will be achieved with time uh, now i go to the other question the other question by Mweshimewa Mule about uh, Konza Technopolis. This is really a gem for young people because this is a city uh, which is going to uh, host the digital ideas for our country. Uh, and in terms of management, the Minister of ICT is leading this special economic zone. Just like any other economic zones, the challenge is the infrastructure, the horizontal infrastructure. Uh, already there has been discussion with the government of South Korea, and they are now they have uh, uh, committed to help us in uh, putting the infrastructure in Konza. Uh, so once the infrastructure is put in place, then we will have a uh, good point, environment. Point of order, Chair. Uh, Chair, so that I can help the CS yes. uh, nominee, already the horizontal infrastructure in Konza City is done. What is being required right now is to pull investors to come and put up the factories. And what I want to hear from you, what land you have and incentive government need to give 
so that you can pull the investors to Konza City to create their jobs. Kenya government has already invested and we have, been, we have visited Konza City uh, not twice, not thrice. The horizontal investment is done. What you are speaking about uh, Korea government, Korea government has already committed to put up the technical institution in the city. What are you going to do for the new investors? What Mule uh, says, Konza Technopolis falls under the ICT ministry. And the investment and all the plans is to make it Kenya's equivalent of the Silicon Valley. So it is not uh, investments to manufacture clothes or shoes or those ordinary manufacturing and trade wares that will fall under him. That's what I understood him to say. Uh, chair, what, chairman. Uh, chairman, what I'm, 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 I'm looking forward for yeah. is the intertwining of the two ministries. Uh, we know very well, uh, the, we know very well, Konza City, uh, the lead ministry is the ICT. But you are coming to a ministry whereby investment, trade and industry will be under your purview, whereby government has already created the environment. And in your previous uh, 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 response, you say that the land and the infrastructure is required. Already there is, a, there is already uh, infrastructure done by Kenya government. It's you to intertwine with the industry uh, uh, ICT ministry to bring us the investors and to create the trade and the industries within the Konza city to create jobs. The speaker, mm -hmm. the speaker, I thought Konza city is a parastatal on its own under the ministry of ICT. Yeah. If, a, if I yes. got it wrong, yes. Yes. I got it right. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. And Prasato are semi-autonomous things that... Are That's what I tried to tell the Honorable Mule, but uh, uh, he's asked the question, let's see if Mugori has the answer. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Speaker, I think there's, there's no contradiction between me and the Honorable Member. Yes. When the Minister of ICT is taking leadership, yes. we will work together to ensure that we support them and we create the necessary synergies within government to advertise Konza City, to provide support through Ken Invest and other institutions in my ministry, uh, to ensure that then it becomes a viable project. So there's no contradiction. Okay. We will work together. Okay. Have you answered uh, all? Um, Robert um, Buiz? I, have, I haven't gone. I'm now going to his question, actually. So. I started from uh, the, the, the recent, uh, now I'm coming up until... Uh, yeah, I think Mushimu uh, Wambui had a number of uh, issues, some were comments, but I will try to speak to them. The allegations of misappropriation, Mr. Speaker, when I was governor, have not been brought to my attention. I have not heard from any government institution alleging misappropriation, whether it is ESCC, whether it is DCI, whether it is the uh, Auditor uh, General, whether the control of budget. I am not privy to any allegations on my integrity. And he also said so that uh, there was no evidence to that. Uh, but but it's, it's good to put the record straight. Yes. Uh, secondly, uh, the, 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 there were issues that uh, uh, Mwishimua raised about um, the foreign direct uh, investments. Uh, and part of what we will be focusing on, the special economic zones, uh, the EPZ, is basically to inspire uh, the foreign direct investment. Uh, right now, I think we have Naivasha, which uh, there are quite a number of investors who have now uh, reported electric, electric vehicle uh, manufacturers are now in Naivasha. Uh, we are also doing Busia. Uh, Busia is, is ongoing. So 
in, in a nutshell, what I will do, I will provide leadership to ensure this enabling environment that the government has earmarked to inspire investments, I will make sure that they come to fruition. Uh, of course, there will be other issues that we will deal with together with Parliament, issues of taxation, uh, issues of uh, incentives for ease of doing business, uh, including making sure that when investors report to Kenya, we have minimum restrictions. There are some investors, when they come here, uh, we tell them they have to do some uh, local registration or those kind of things. But that, that we will deal with uh, you as parliament uh, to ensure that we together uh, create an enabling environment for foreign direct investment. Mwishimua, when I hear you about the issue of AGOA and, you know, uh, not just your lecturer, but many Kenyans you know, are used to AGOA, which is uh, coming to an end in 2025. And the discussion on AGOA is two front. One is uh, political, and another one is economic. Uh, political in the sense that um, currently there are elections in the uh, US. And in between, uh, the, the Congress may, might not sit to discuss AGOA. However, as government, we've already made our position known as uh, Kenya position. Uh, that our wish is AGOA to continue, and that has been uh, put emphatically. Didn't, uh, you, didn't the government sign a trade agreement with the U.S., or is not yet signed? Uh, on AGOA? No, no, no. Not on AGOA. AGOA is not just about Kenya, it's about Africa. It's about Africa. So you have to go cooperate with the rest of Africa. E exactly. So I, I think the other issue, uh, Mr. Chairman, that I wanted to bring on board is that we all know AGOA and the deadline. Uh, the government of Kenya, through the ministry, is also in discussion with the US government for the strategic uh, investment uh, partnership. Uh, that is ongoing. And, and part of what I will be taking over uh, upon approval by this house is to ensure that, you know, we, we discuss uh, graduating, you know, this uh, STIP, uh, into a market access arrangement and a comprehensive uh, uh, free trade agreement. Uh, those are some of the things that I want to commit that we will be putting on the table. Uh, once we succeed to have it as a comprehensive free trade agreement and market access, then we will, we will have had a good transition, you know, from Agoa to this new arrangement. But it's still on the table. Uh, there's a meeting next month uh, on STIP, uh, and I'm sure these are some of the ideas that we'll be leading uh, as Kenya. Uh, the other question by Mushmiwa George Murugaru, uh, Murungaru, uh, on, uh, I think there are a number of issues that he, he mentioned, some are comments. Uh, it is true, we, we went together to Taraka. We actually flew together to Kithiori, we saw the iron ore, and there are many things. I want to assure you, Mushimiwa, there's an investor who is now coming into that area. Uh, that's part of the handing over I will do, but also because I'm in investment, we will work with my colleague because he's going to be putting up uh, a value addition point in uh, that area and immediately employ between 500 to 1,000 Kenyans in that area. Um, so that's about the mining. The issue of uh, raw materials. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to commit that we are working with our colleagues in agriculture. We will work with our colleagues in agriculture to revive the raw material crops that can support local manufacturing. And one of these is cotton. Already within the ministry, there are projects, uh, January, uh, the Minister of Agriculture is already providing uh, cotton seeds in, in parts of the country. Mapping has been done. Engagement with county governments has already been done. Uh, and I commit to continue this conversation 
so that we can have raw materials for our local industries, but also for the EPZ and for export. Uh, part of these uh, raw materials also means sunflower, uh, because the importation of uh, edible oil is taking a lot of our budget, uh, and it is the desire that we inspire local manufacturing so that edible oil can, can be value added here in the country. Uh, and instead of uh, importing, we can also uh, export to other places uh, in Africa. I, I, I hope. Shuria, yes, you have done all of them. Shuria. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Mwishimuwa the, the Trade Ministry, in collaboration with the county governments, has been and continues to implement the county aggregation and industrial parks. In your opinion, do you think there has been enough publicity and stakeholder engagements? And what strategies or approaches will you adopt to forestall these projects turning into white elephants? I thank you. Thank Mr. you, Mishi. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, before I ask my one question, I just want to put a rider on what uh, our nominee has just said, and because it affects my constituency, and this is about the special economic zone, you need to know that there is what we call Dongokundu Special Economic Zone, which is situated in Likoni constituency, where I represent. And I just wanted our nominee just to give some clarity on how many foreign investors so far have expressed their interest vis-a-vis -vis the local investors. And if it is true that local investors have been denied to be given land for investment, I just want him to answer this so that he gives clarity to Kenyans. And my question, Honorable Chairman, it is on is that the... A rider or a that's is a rider because he has already talked about Special Economic Zone, Chairman. <laughs> But he didn't mention about Dongokundu special economics, so that is why I had put that rider. Uh, Honorable Chairman, my question it is on the Kenya Kwanza Manifesto, which was talking about establishment of leather industry clusters, which was to be in Earth River, Naro, Kisiolo, and Wajia. I just want to ask our nominee, what spe specific strategies are you going to employ to ensure that Kenya Kwanza government will realize this agenda? And on the same breath, what policy intervention are you going to employ to help reverse the current unfortunate trend of closure of industries? And more so coming up with new industries like coconut, cashew nut, and bixa, which is grown in where you come, Kwale County. I thank you, Honorable Chairman. Mukami. Honorable Mukami. Uh. Honorable Speaker, my question is, uh, considering the legal uh, challenges to the Finance Act 2023 and the significant role of small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, in Kenya economy, what steps will you take to ensure that new tax regulations are fair and supportive of SME growth, while also addressing the broader goals of economic stability and trade enhancement? Thank you. Caleb. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, our nominee, you've, you must have uh, looked at the development, developmental states on, and how their path to development uh, was based on, uh, especially the ones that took the route of trade surplus, that is the uh, advantage of the exports over the imports. Um, some they call it mercantilism, where you put more rules and, uh, um, and, uh, and, and, and the standards to make sure that the exports surpasses the imports to develop your nation. It, it, is, it has proven in many, uh, especially the South Asian countries of uh, Taiwan, South Korea, and Japan. Uh, this, this one requires a regime, a, a, a set of rules and uh, principles to guide it. The general agreements on tariffs and trade uh, 